Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Worship of Grace United Methodist Church. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And welcome also to those who are watching on Facebook and YouTube live. I guess YouTube is not hooked up this time, but Facebook is, but welcome anyway. And all those who are with us in spirit. Please rise and join us in singing the love divine all loves and stuff like so. Saturday of December, you should be receiving that letter, and uh, we're just, because of the COVID-19 virus and the situation we're in, the pandemic, and we're just not having it, and uh, there will be a, uh, we're, we're just asking people to send in, uh, as the Lord will lay on the heart, send in an offering. Uh, then you'll see in your bulletin the Lord's Force and Silent Auction. We are going to have a silent auction, but that's going to be December 13th. And from uh, after after our church services, it'll be from 10 to 11. And there you can see that we'll have this in the bulletins now every Sunday, I think, until. So pass the word around and. You'll see there'll be themed assets. There's going to be some homemade noodles available, and there's going to be some collapses available. And uh, so you can you can see and read about it in the answer. That's what I wanted to, to share. And also, you know, the inside your bulletin is there's that the, with the uh, be sure to pay attention to the storm shelter. Uh, needs that we have. Uh, if we get that little tote filled up that's out there in the lobby area, we'll we'll get another tote and, and uh, fill it up. So uh, that's uh, that's what I wanted to let you all know. Thank you.
Also in your announcements, it says on Monday, October 26, which is tomorrow, that there is another prayer meeting. That is not right. It's the first Monday, which would be November 2nd, will be that prayer group, not tomorrow evening. So come join on October 2nd. But we still have the one on Tuesday evening, which we have every week, our Tuesday evening prayer meetings at 530. Also, I want you to notice the church conference we will be having here at our church when the district, I guess that's virtual. He's not coming personally, is that right? Okay, I didn't think so. But anyway, it's on November 1st at 4 o'clock, and everyone is invited to come to that church conference that we have where we tell who's going to do what next year and so on and so forth. And then below that says that new prayer group that is starting, that will be starting Monday, November 2nd, not tomorrow evening. So I want you to be aware of that. Um, I believe that's everything. Take notice on the back of the people that are ailing, and we will get into that when we have our prayer later on. You know, with so many things going on right now, uh, we have to remember that God's in charge all the time. Uh, and a lot of times we kind of forget that. But in this book that I'm reading here, Inspired Evidence, there's uh, an article in here about our Christian truths. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Have you considered what the... Uh, Christian world worldview has produced. Christians started most hospitals, hospices, and medical clinics. You know, we, a lot of times we think we have to look to the government government for a lot of things. If it wasn't for our churches, what would this country be like? Florence Nightingale received inspiration from Jesus Christ. Nearly all of the first 123 American universities were started by Christians to teach others how to learn from the Bible. Before the Civil War, two-thirds of abolition societies were headed by pastors. Before Christianity, cannibalism was widespread and Anglo-Saxons drank human blood. It was the gospel which civilized barbaric cultures. Modern science. The vast majority of scientific discoveries are from Christian-based countries. Capitalism and free enterprise. Christianity is directly responsible for work disciplines, self-reliance, and self-denial. Elevation of women. No other religion elevates women to equality with men. Representative government. Patrick Henry stated, it cannot be emphasized too strongly or too often that this great nation was founded not by religionists, but by Christians not on religion, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Civil liberties. All people are created equal. That's the American Declaration of Independence. Benevolence and charity. YMCA, Young Men's Christian Association, Salvation Army, Red Cross, AA, and Teen Challenge. Great works of art and music 
produced by those wishing to bring glory to God. The Christian worldview has made more changes on earth for the good than any other movement or force of history. These are just a few of the positive contributions that Christians have made throughout the centuries. God is concerned for our life not only in eternity, but also on earth. And the Christian worldview, when practiced, brings forth goodness. Next, I'd like Elder to come up forward to do the children's moments. Backside, we got a hose for a camera. I don't know for sure, but I think there are probably more songs written about love than almost anything else in the world. Here's a list of some of the favorites Make, Love Makes the World Go Round, Love and Marriage, and When I Fall in Love. But one of the, my favorite songs, and one it's probably the first song that I ever remember singing. I'm 71, and it was, I was probably four or five or six years old when I started singing this song. The little Mennonite church, and I was sitting over on Clark Street. If you know it, sing along with me. But I also have a challenge for you. Every time you hear the word love on this song, make a heart shape with your hands. Everyone see this? Make a heart. Here it goes. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. What a wonderful song about Jesus' love for us today. In today's Bible lesson, Jesus teaches another very important lesson about love. I want you to help me again. And this is for all the audience at home, adults and children. Every time you hear the word love, make a heart shape with your hands. People were always amazed at the teachings of Jesus. One day, a crowd was gathered around Jesus when a man who was an expert in religious law tried to trap Jesus with this question. Teacher, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus answered, Love your Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. In other words, Jesus was saying that if we could love God and love others, we would not have any trouble keeping the other Ten Commandments. Let's ask God to help us to love as we are. And here is the prayer. Dear God, help us to love you with all your heart and to love our neighbors as we love ourselves in Jesus' name. Thank you. If there are no uh, other con joys or concerns, we will bow our heads in the word of prayer.
Awesome God, we come before you this morning to enjoy just the silence with all of the hustle and bustle and all the things that go on in the outside world. What a wonderful moment just to just to have silence and to contemplate worshiping you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for that. This morning we want to pray for the Graven family and the loss of the loved one, Ray Graven. The loss of Robin's mother. Those people who are struggling with the loss of loved ones. We know that you can heal every heart, Heavenly Father. We pray that you do that this morning. Tomorrow morning there's surgery for Karen Becker, Heavenly Father. Pray that you will be with the doctors as they perform the surgery. Be with the family as they watch over Karen. This morning we also want to pray for this church. Pray for its leaders. Guide and direct them that they bring everyone here to glorify you, Heavenly Father, because we know that that's why we're here. All the blessings that we have, most wonderful of all, is your Son, Jesus Christ. And it's in his name that we pray. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. I guess we have a video now and I want to make sure that you don't run away when you're watching this.
You all stuck around, I don't believe it. <laughs> you know, Pastor Ruby told us to smile during that old song. Did you see anybody smile? <laughs> we tried. We were smiling in our hearts. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay. Would the ushers come forward, please? Please rise for the top celebration. This reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 34, verses 1 through 11. Then Moses climbed Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab to the top of Pisgah, across from Jericho. There the Lord showed him the whole land from Gilead to Dan, all of Naphtali, the territory of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the Mediterranean Sea, the Negev, and the whole region from the valley of Jericho, the city of Palms, as far as Zoar. Then the Lord said to him, This is the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, when I said, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you will not cross over into it. 
And Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in Moab, as the Lord had said. He buried him in Moab, in the valley opposite Beth Beor. But to this day, no one knows where his grave is. Moses was 120 years old when he died, yet his eyes were not weak, nor his strength gone. The Israelites grieved for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days, until the time of weeping and mourning was over. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom, because Moses had laid his hand on him. So the Israelites listened to him and did what the Lord had commanded Moses. Since then, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, who did all those signs and wonders the Lord sent him to do in Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his officials and to his whole land. For no one has ever shown the mighty power or performed the awesome deeds that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. This is the word of God. Thank you, God. Praise be to God. A blessed Sunday, brothers and sisters in the Lord. God is good. All the time. God is great. Amen. Hallelujah. I would like to begin our sermon this morning with a story that I got from a post by Idealist in Facebook. That is the picture. A man holding the hand of a woman. He is 85 and insists on taking his wife hand in hand wherever they go. When I ask why, why your wife is distracted, like she wasn't following anyone, he replied, she have Alzheimer's. So I said, will your wife worry? If you let her go? He replied, She doesn't remember. She doesn't know who I am anymore. She hasn't recognized me for years. Surprise, I said. And still, you continue to guide on the way every day, even though she doesn't recognize you? The elderly man smiled and looked into my eyes, and he said, She doesn't know who I am, but I know who she is. I love her, for she is the love of my life. Isn't that a wonderful story? If you were the man in the story, would you do the same? Hello, good morning. Can I hear a loud answer? Would you do the same? Yeah. That's great. Would you keep pressing on loving the woman you vowed to love or the other way around? Would you love the man that you vowed to love even if he or she doesn't recognize you? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Would you keep pressing on in spite of her situation? Yes. That man, I believe, knows the real meaning. That man knows the real meaning of love. Not just eros, but agape love. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Love makes the whole world go around. And love is the greatest gift of God. Jesus commanded his disciples and all who believe in him to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love made God gave his son to die for you and me on the cross. Yes? Amen? Hallelujah! And that is love. Now, are you pressing on in loving God and loving others 
today? Yeah. The Old Testament reading tells us of Moses talking with God on the mountain where God allowed Moses to see the promised land. But God said that Moses will not be able to set foot on the promised land. And according to the text that was read a while ago, Moses died at the age of 120. Moses. Moses was the great liberator of the Hebrew people. He led the Hebrews out of Egypt. He led the Hebrews in the wilderness. And he was a great leader. Our list can go on and on and on. But on this list, Moses was unique in that he was God's man to found the nation of Israel and give them his laws, the Ten Commandments. Moses knew God and there was no greater prophet that lived after him. That's what our text from the Old Testament tells us. Moses knew God in a unique way. In Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 10, we read, we can read that God doesn't emphasize Moses' knowledge of him, but rather God's knowledge of Moses. The text says, whom the Lord knew face to face. That's the description. Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. The Lord knew Moses because Moses always talked and communicated with God. His burning bush experience proved this. His Mount Sinai experience proved this. His encounter with the Lord on their way to the promised land when the people needed to cross the sea, Moses talked to God. And when the Israelite people, the Hebrew people, needed food, they needed water, Moses talked with God. Moses was in constant communication with God. And Moses loved God. And I believe this is one of the reasons why Moses had the heart to serve the stubborn Hebrew people. Moses was not perfect too. History tells us that there were many times that Moses complained and he got angry because of what the Israelite people had done. Moses got so angry and at one time he disobeyed God. Moses struck the rock twice and he disobeyed God's command. Well, like we, Moses was just human. Like us, Moses failed. Moses failed and we failed too. But God's love is always there. Moses died and was not able to set foot on the promised land. But even when Moses failed in one aspect, God was faithful and God was gracious to him and to the whole Israelite nation. Love the Lord your God and love others as you love yourself. This is what Jesus is telling the disciples. And his answer to the one who was questioning Jesus, what was the greatest commandment? This is what Jesus is telling them. Do you know Christ? Do the disciples know Christ? How can they love someone they do not know? Do they serve Christ? Do they obey Christ? No! Serve and obey. That was what Moses did. He knew God because he was in constant communication with him. He served God through serving the Israelite people. And Moses obeyed God too. In knowing, serving, and obeying God, Moses had a purpose and desire to serve and love 
his people, the Israelite people. You know, I believe with all my heart the ultimate reason why we can faithfully serve and love other people is the foundation that we have. If our foundation for service is our love for God, then like Moses, we can love and we can serve other people too. So, the question, how are we pressing on in loving God? How can we know God when we do not have time for Him? How can we know God when we, we do not ha have time to read His words, to meditate, to pray, and come face to face with Him every day? I know and I believe again that if we just take time to be still and be alone with God, we will come to listen to His still, small voice talking, speaking to us, telling us the things that we should be doing. Today, we are reminded to press on, love God and love others. Shouldn't we be thankful that we are given a chance to press on today? Shouldn't we be thankful that God always blesses us with the opportunity of having the time to continue to love Him and to love others, yes. our family, yes. our friends, our neighbor, or that's, who is that? Someone there waiting for us to reach our hand out to him or to her. The word pressing means pressing on is to continue moving forward in a forceful or steady way. Pressing on means to continue to do something especially in a determined way. So are we determined in loving God and loving our neighbor? In the midst of the struggles of our life, the pandemic, the isolation, the fear, brothers and sisters, let us be reminded we are blessed to have this day to continue pressing on. Indeed, let us press on. Love God and love others. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shall we all rise and let us sing our closing hymn, More Love to Thee.
and loving others as yourself. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.